It's Alistair from the de Havilland Aircraft Museum here again. Uh, I want to tell you a little story that relates to mosquitoes now, and it's the story that relates to this gentleman here, Professor Niels Bohr. He was a Danish nuclear physicist at Copenhagen University uh, in the 20s, 30s and 40s, uh, and he was one of the greatest scientists of his time. He developed the theory on the structure of the atomic nucleus and was one of the first people to do so. He was a contemporary of Einstein and many other scientists at the time. Um, now, during the war, um, he initially refused to leave Copenhagen University because he was a patriotic Dane. He felt that that was where his place was. But uh, when it was overrun by the Nazis, he was also of Jewish heritage. Uh, and so he really did need to flee Copenhagen at one point. Uh, and he made his escape as far as Stockholm. And it was arranged through the British Secret Service and Diplomatics channels that a BOAC Mosquito Courier aircraft would fly out from Scotland to, um, to, Copenhagen, to, uh, to Stockholm to pick up Professor Bohr and bring him back. Now, the way in which you do this in a mosquito is not immediately obvious. Uh, best way probably is let's go over to a mosquito bomber aircraft and I'll show you how it's done. Mosquito bomber, you have a nice large bomb bay and the courier mosquitoes operated by BOAC um, we're equipped with um, cargo carrying capacity in here and for VIP transport such as picking up and collecting uh, Professor Bohr, they had a hammock in there. Um, so this aircraft went across to Stockholm to pick up a good professor, uh, fitted with a hammock inside and an oxygen supply and a helmet for him to put on and apparently there's a flask of coffee and the reading light in there as well. So he was loaded up into the bomb bay of the Mosquito and the pilot told him you need to put this helmet on professor uh, and when we climb to altitude I will tell you when you have to put your oxygen mask on because you'll need that because we've got to climb over the mountains to get away uh, and uh, you will need the oxygen to breathe. Uh, and so that was all understood and the bomb bay doors were shut with Professor Bohr inside the bomb bay. Uh, the aircraft took off and then Professor Bohr found that he couldn't actually put the helmet on because he had rather a large head uh, and he couldn't fit the helmet on. Therefore he lost contact with the pilot and the pilot was worried. He didn't the pilot didn't know that he hadn't got the helmet on, so the pilot was worried that um, something was wrong. Professor Bohr himself couldn't put the oxygen mask on, therefore he lost consciousness as the plane climbed to altitude. The result being, the story goes, that when they landed at RAF Lucas on the east coast of Scotland and they opened the bomb doors, dropped the hammock down, they found Professor Bohr still in the hammock but unconscious. So they whisked him off to the sick bay of the airbase uh, and filled him full of uh, coffee and possibly the odd uh, wee dram of Scotch whisky or something like that uh, to bring him round. He came round quite happily uh, and they said, are you alright Professor, we're really worried about you um, because you were unconscious there and he said, no that was fantastic thank you. It was a lovely flight. I slept the whole way, as indeed he did, because he was unconscious. But never mind, he recovered, um, he was debriefed, and he, was, uh, he had a lot of discussions with physicists in the UK, but eventually he went over to America and became part of the Manhattan Project to develop the first atomic bomb. Later on, uh, the BOAC mosquitoes went back to Stockholm and they brought Professor Bohr's son out the same way, and his wife joined them later on, so the entire family was successfully brought out from Stockholm. And, uh, and came to freedom that way. So Professor Bohr owed his freedom to the good old mosquito. Interesting little story. Thanks for listening. See you on the next time. Stay safe, stay well.